and welcome back. If this is your first time joining us, welcome to Online Worship with Mosaic Church. I'm your host and I'm the Online Worship Director for Mosaic Church. My name is DJ and today you are in my kitchen because I am about to bake a cake. You see, I was thinking about my grandmother and how she used to bake her famous rum cake and how we'd like to sit and listen to her tell stories while she baked. Well, I'm not gonna share with you her famous rum cake recipe, but I will share with you my 7-Up cake recipe. Today, we're gonna start our new series, Undivided. And during this journey through the book of James, we'll be learning what it really means to be an undivided kingdom of God. There's so much that divides us out there, but a mosaic cannot be a mosaic if it's divided. It's just really a bunch of broken pieces. Kind of like this cake right now, you see each piece, each ingredient serves as a purpose. The flour in this cake box mix for rising, the pudding and 7-Up for flavoring, the eggs serve as a binding agent to keep everything together and the oil provides moisture. Separate, they're just ingredients hanging out doing their own thing, but together they make a delicious cake. You see, family, together, undivided, unmoved, and unshaken, standing up for and advocating for each other, loving on and forgiving one another, even when it's hard. Together, we can change the world. Okay, so now we have all of our ingredients mixed up. We are gonna create a kingdom cake, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in the oven and come back for prayer. During this series, we're going to be doing the same breakthrough responsive prayer every week. This prayer is rooted in unity and love for others. Each week, the leader will read the prayer and pause. And during that pause, I invite you to read the response at the bottom of the screen. The last part we will read together, so let us pray. Across the barriers that divide race from race. Across the barriers that divide rich from poor. Across the barriers that divide people from different cultures. Across the barriers that divide Christians. Across the barriers that divide men and women, young and old. Confront us, O Christ, with the hidden prejudices and fears that deny and betray our prayers. Enable us to see the cause of strife, remove from us all sense of superiority. Teach us to grow in unity with all of God's children. Amen. Let us worship. The song says, Lord, you are worthy. And there is no one, no one that can worship you for me. Let's sing that together. Say, you are worthy. You, Lord.
loves the 80s. If he could relive any decade in history, I think it would be the 1980s. I mean, he especially loves 80s music and movies. Do we have any 80s fans out there? If so, share a favorite 80s song or movie in the comments. It might become a part of our watch list. I mean, you see, Raz has embarked on a mission to educate me on all the 1980s movies that I somehow missed growing up. Some of his favorites were the Karate Kid movies. Now, I'd seen Karate Kid 1 and 2, but I recently watched Karate Kid 3 for the first time. In this movie, Mr. Miyagi and Daniel LaRusso open a bonsai plant shop 
called Mr. Miyagi's Little Trees. Because who doesn't want to buy a cool little treat, right? Well, some bullies steal all the bonsai plants right before it opens. So Daniel goes and finds a rare original bonsai plant that Mr. Miyagi brought from Japan and planted on the side of a steep cliff. Well, the bullies come and they find Daniel. And when he's collecting the rare bonsai tree worth thousands of dollars, they take it away from him and they break it in two. Well, Daniel rushes the tree to Mr. Miyagi and in a desperate plea says, is it gonna be okay? Mr. Miyagi replies, depends if roots strong, tree survive. Friends, sometimes I look at the broken, divided world around us and I feel that same desperation Daniel experienced. I cry out, God, can you fix it? Will it be okay? Because Satan has been busy at work. His mission is to steal, kill, and destroy. And he's having a party right now with all the hatred in the world. It feels like the world is more divided than ever. And that division seems to have invaded the church. I mean, we fight over politics, we fight over abortion, we fight over racism, we fight over homosexuality, we fight over whether to wear a mask or not. God, can you fix it? Is it gonna be okay? Friends, I think God replies the same way as Mr. Miyagi. If the root is strong, the tree will survive. If our roots are strong, the church will survive. That's why we're embarking on a new series called Undivided, getting back to our roots as children in the kingdom of God. So if you need a little hope today, if you are looking at this crazy world around us and saying, God, will, will it be okay? Then you're in the right place. My name is Callie Picardo, and I want to say welcome to Mosaic Church, where we desire to see all the broken pieces, that's you and that's me, come together to form a beautiful work of art, a dynamic mosaic of Jesus followers. Throughout this series, we're going to be digging into the book of James in the New Testament. So if you have your Bible or smartphone handy, I want to invite you to turn to James 1.1. And while you're turning there, I want to issue a challenge. Sometime this week, read the book of James. It's only five chapters, and it is super practical. Maybe you go so far as to read James once a week for the next month while we're in this series. And see what God shows you. Let me know how it goes. I'll be really curious to hear. Well, in the first verse, we see that this is a letter from James, a servant of God, and of the Lord Jesus Christ. While it doesn't say which James this is, many scholars believe this is James, the half-brother of Jesus, who didn't follow Jesus during his earthly ministry, but became a believer after witnessing Jesus' resurrection. I mean, it would be hard to worship your brother, right? I mean, especially if he was the annoying perfect older brother. But then he saw his brother crucified, buried, and then he saw his brother risen from the dead. Talk about a wake-up call. After Jesus' resurrection, James became one of the leaders of the church of Jerusalem. And verse 1 goes on to tell us that he's writing this book to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations. That means he's writing to Jewish Christians. Now, I love this book of the Bible because of how practical it is. I mean, in the Old Testament, we've got Proverbs filled with wisdom on how to live out our faith. Well, then in the New Testament, we have James. But just because it's practical, unfortunately, doesn't make it easy. You see, James is encouraging God's people to actually act like God's people. If we want to heal our divided church, and I'm not just talking Mosaic, but the church worldwide with a capital C, then we've got to get back to our roots and remember what it means to be a kingdom people. Join me as we dig into James chapter 2, verses 14 through 26. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such a faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. 
But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Well, show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there's one God. Good! Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God and was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Throughout this undivided series, we're going to look at different aspects of the kingdom of God because God's kingdom is not divided. It's a united kingdom. And today, we're going to specifically look at what it means to be a kingdom people. Here in James, we see a powerful example of what it means to be a kingdom people. James 2 says being a kingdom people equals faith plus action. I mean, everyone's back to school now, so there's your math equation for today. Kingdom people equals faith plus action. Let's break down each of the parts First, let's look at the word kingdom. The word kingdom in Greek, basileia, appears 162 times in the New Testament. And most of these uses relate to either basileia tauteo, the kingdom of God, or to basileia ton ornon, kingdom of heaven. Jesus loved to teach about the kingdom. It would appear throughout his parables. He would often start a parable by saying, the kingdom of heaven is like, I mean, consider some of these. He would say, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. Or the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. And he'd go on to describe it. Jesus pointed us to a greater kingdom, the kingdom of God who unites us. Not in a way that tries to please everybody, but in a way that calls us higher, that points us to a king who is righteous and just, loving and merciful, all-powerful and full of grace. When we lift our gaze from the world around us, we find ourselves drawn together as the body of Christ across worldly divisions. We cannot call ourselves God's people, kingdom people, and remain divided on the basics of love justice, mercy, forgiveness, and grace. And you see, kingdom people is not the same as church people. Just because you go to church and say you're a Christian does not mean you are living as kingdom people. I love this quote from Howard Snyder in his book, Liberating the Church. He says, kingdom people seek first the kingdom of God and its justice. Church people often put church work above the concerns of justice, mercy, and truth. Church people think about how to get people into the church. Kingdom people think about how to get the church into the world. Church people worry that the world might change the church. Kingdom people work to see the church change the world. Mosaic, the cool thing is that when we go out and scatter into the world, into our workplaces, schools, and communities, we carry the church into the world. As we seek first the kingdom of God and its justice, the way we live differently starts to impact the culture around us. But we've got work to do because the world needs us to be salt and light. The world needs us to stop isolating in Christian bubbles, and the world needs us to stop trying to blend in. 
The world needs us to seek first the kingdom and live out God's justice, mercy, and truth in the world. Because as James says in verse 14, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? The world needs the witness of a kingdom people. That brings us to the next part of our kingdom people equation. Kingdom people first equals faith. Verse 19 starts, you believe that there is one God. Good. We'll get to the second part of that verse soon, but it starts with faith. Our kingdom has one God, one king. This means it's a monarchy. God comes first. We believe in Jesus Christ as the one true Lord and Savior. The way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus says, no one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the only way to salvation. And being a kingdom people means lifting up Jesus Christ. You see, there are all sorts of good people in the world doing good works. But works alone can't save them. Because no one, not one of us is perfect. Sorry to break it to you. No one is perfect except Jesus, God's own son, who came to live on earth as one of us and to take on our sins, dying for us so that we might have eternal life. That means when our life on earth ends and we stand before the judgment throne, instead of seeing all of our imperfections, God looks at us and sees Jesus Christ. That's what happens when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And if you've never done that and want to know more, Pastor Roz, Pastor Wayne, or I would love to talk with you. Send us a message on Facebook or through our website or email us at info at wearemosaic.org. We would love to talk with you as you explore that option. And maybe you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but you're trying to figure out where to go next. You see, our faith is not a one-time event. It's a journey. It's getting to know God better on a personal level. There are so many ways to do that. But one of the most powerful is setting aside time each day to spend one-on-one with God. Reading the Bible, praying, journaling, even saying thank you to God for things you're grateful for. Being in God's creation, talking with God, really whatever helps you connect with the Lord. Imagine being married, but never spending time one-on-one with your spouse. I mean, that relationship is going to stay pretty surface level and you are going to feel pretty distant even if you live in the same house. And you see, God lives in the same house with us. God is with us always through the Holy Spirit living inside of us. But if we never stop to talk with God and experience the Lord's presence, God's going to feel distant. Start somewhere, even if it's five minutes a day. The important thing is consistently seeking God over the long term. Because the more you do it, the closer you'll grow. Another way to grow in your faith is corporately, with the body of Christ. That happens when we come together to worship God and hear God's word. That also happens in small groups. We have a variety of Bible studies and men's and women's huddles that meet throughout the week. Check out the Mosaic app or the website wearemosaic.org or reach out to us and we would love to help you get plugged in to grow in your faith in community. So being a king of people starts with faith, but it doesn't stop there. It needs action. You see, verse 19 doesn't stop after it says, you believe that there is one God. Good. It goes on to say, even the demons believe that and shudder. You see, you can believe in God and not follow God. To really be kingdom people, if Jesus is your Lord and Savior, that changes everything. You should see it in your actions. You see, verse 17 says, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, it's dead. That is a dead faith. It needs action. I love the examples James gives because he points first to Abraham, the father of the Jewish faith, who loved God so much that he was willing to sacrifice his own son Isaac on the altar. But then he points to Rahab, the prostitute. You see, Rahab harbored two Jewish spies that Joshua sent to check out the promised land, specifically Jericho. Remember the battle of Jericho? Well, Rahab helped them, and she wasn't even Jewish, 
but she believed in God and she showed it with her actions, helping the Israelites. And Rahab ended up being the great, great grandmother of King David. And generations later, from the same family tree is born Jesus Christ. Rahab ended up in the lineage of Jesus because of faithfulness to God. You see, you don't have to be a pastor or a missionary to be a kingdom person. God needs you to live out your faith right where you are. At your job, at school, in, ho in your home, as you engage with people online, via social media, email, and Zoom. God needs you where you are. Are you living out your faith? That looks different for each of us. But to get your wheels turning, I have invited my friend Hallie Spar to share her testimony. Good morning, Mosaic Church. My name is Hallie Spar, and I am here to share my testimony with you guys and hopefully encourage someone today. I was baptized on the first Easter Sunday that Mosaic got to celebrate as a church. Um, first of all, thank you to God for Mosaic Church. Um, I would not be living the life that I'm living today without this church. Um, I wouldn't know what it's like to have a relationship with Jesus or what it means to serve God. A story starts three years ago, um, I think almost to the day. The first time that I came to Mosaic Church was on October 2nd, um, 2017. Before this, though, I was one of those broken pieces. I was inching my way through industrial engineering school at Wright State, uh, questioning many times, is this really for me? Is this really what I want to do? Um, typical college student things. I was building up the pressure to find an internship and I was also in an emotionally abusive relationship. Um, I was very controlled and manipulated by this man. Um, so I was feeling very sad, um, very isolated, very hopeless at this time in my life. Um, I was in need of some power and strength that only God could provide for me. I was invited to Mosaic Church by the little girl that I babysat, Charlie. Um, she was, I think, nine years old at this time, and she really wanted me to see what Mosaic was doing. Um, having church in a movie theater, I had to come. Um, I didn't really know what God was going to do in my life, though. I know that I was always supposed to be there at Mosaic, but I didn't know what was gonna happen in the next few months. Um, so I immediately started serving with the Mosaic Kids team. Um, they were in need of servants on Sunday morning. So I was like, yeah. Um, I love getting involved with kids and um, I've always been a babysitter. So it was just an obvious yes for me to help. Um, but I didn't really know what it meant to serve God, so God was kind of teaching me what that meant and what that looked like as I um, jumped in there. And I know that the further that I was pulling away from God at this time, the harder that he was chasing me down. I think I started to get a good service in January when Mosaic moved to two services. And this is when God really started to speak to me, and it really gave me that time to worship him and seek out what he was calling me to do. Um, so I made the decision to get baptized because I know that God was promising me a life with more purpose and hope. Um, God pulled me out of that relationship that I was not capable of leaving on my own. He, he really made a way um, when I thought there was no way of getting out of there. This is probably the best decision that I have made in my life to this day. Um, I'm so thankful for Mosaic Church and being able to get involved with a church that is growing in so many ways and is serving so many different people. I'm so glad that God has provided me with this opportunity to be a part of something so big. Um, 
you know, God has really transformed me in the last three years. And I thought that I was so transformed when I was just getting baptized, but that was only a couple months. And now I look back and I think about how much my life has changed since this time. And I just am still so blessed to continue this walk, um, continue to serve more and do more with Mosaic Church and all the things that are going on here. So today I want to encourage everyone to take action, um, take a step, small or big, uh, whatever it is that God is calling you today. Um, he loves us and his plan is far greater than ours. It's really time to keep our focus on him and see how much goodness he has for our lives. Thank you. Do your actions align with your faith? Start by confessing anywhere they don't. What is God calling you to do today, this week, to live out your faith? When we do get back to our roots as kingdom people, and do you know what happens when the root is strong? You see, toward the end of Karate Kid 3, Mr. Miyagi brings out that bonsai tree that was completely broken in two. Once so hopelessly divided, it's now budding flowers. Daniel exclaims, look at that, it's going to make it. To which Mr. Miyagi replies, make it because have strong root. Just like you, daniel son, inside you have strong root. No need nothing except what inside you to grow. Mosaic Church, we have inside of us a strong root because when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we receive the Holy Spirit, God living inside of us. That makes us a kingdom people. And we've got, we don't need anything else but to let the Holy Spirit inside of us to grow and to come out in all areas of our life to have a living faith in action because that same Holy Spirit that lived in Jesus Christ now lives in you and in me. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for being with us always, for the gift of your Holy Spirit living and moving inside of us. Lord, forgive us for where we have failed to put our faith into action for the things we have done and for the things we have simply left undone. Thank you for your forgiveness, for your grace, and for your willingness to work with us, to walk with us as we try to figure out how to put our faith in action. Lord, show us the way, guide us, show us where you're calling us to even today, even this week. God, how can we be a light for your kingdom? Help us to live as kingdom people, fully transformed on the inside, to transform the culture around us, to live radically different for you, God, because you are our one true king. God, we want to lift you up. We want to see the church united because of the power of Jesus Christ, and we want to make an impact in the world around us. We want people to look at us and say, I want what those Christians have because they live so differently, so powerfully, so confidently. They must have something special, and God, we know we do. So, Lord, help us to live as your kingdom people. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
worship friends. Guys, it's time to ice this bad boy. I mean, what's an undivided kingdom cake without some icing, am I right? I mean, really, you guys are the icing. The way that you guys serve one another, your community, your church, the way that you encourage one another and you celebrate your wins, the way that you forgive one another and love on the Mosaic staff team, you guys are the icing and you can continue to help our undivided kingdom grow by giving. Now you can give online at www.wearemosaic.org or our app, or you can mail a check to 70 Birch Alley, Suite 240, Beaver Creek, Ohio. And while you're on our app, you can drop a prayer or care request that you may have, or you can sign up for our women's fall group session beginning October 6th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. You can join us back here next week for a continuation of our Undivided series. And remember, you are loved. Grant, O oh Lord, that what has been said with our lips, we may believe in our hearts and that what we believe in our hearts, we may practice in our lives. Amen, guys. We will see you next week.